you so much, Beck. Um, everyone, good evening uh, from Kenya. Good morning uh, for those who are in the other parts of the world. Um, it's 7 p.m. here in the country, uh, on this side of the world. And um, I'm happy to meet you once again um, since the day we met in Inverness. I won't say um, it, it, it's been such a... It's been a long time, but it looks like as though it was just yesterday. I was not in a position to join you in Canada as you, we were celebrating um, the milestones that GoGN has made so far uh, for reasons uh, known to some of you. However, um, <clears throat> we are here. Progress still goes on. I hope one time in future we will again meet. So I remember... Uh, when you were leaving uh, Inverness uh, Airport and Martin asked me, uh, will you be available? Uh, how long do you want us to prepare your documents? And I said, yes. And uh, I felt guilty that <laughs> I did not make it. However, here we are. Um, those are the challenges that we meet along the way um, as far as um, things and things are concerned, which are beyond our, our, our powers and our possibilities. So I'm here to share my 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 work, um, and I hope uh, I'll be in a position to deliver what I need to deliver. Uh, since the last time, since the last time we met, I was pre, I was I was collecting my data by then, and uh, I was in the process of anal analyzing my data. And as I speak right now, my work has already been looked at by external examiners. Uh, I've done the recommendations that they have requested. And now it is sitting at the desk of uh, the department. Uh, I have been approved for graduation in the month of April uh, back in South Africa. So I'll have to fly all the way from Kenya to South Africa, uh, God willing, in the month of April for graduation. And um, I wish to <clears throat> say thank you to God GN for giving me a platform to share uh, my 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 research findings and my study as far as this is concerned. So uh, the content that I'm going to cover, I'll just give a brief um, view of the background, what necessitated uh, myself uh, getting into this kind of a study. Uh, look at uh, the literature context, what did I look at? Uh, not really in, in a thorough format, or in detail, but I'll just point out some of the, 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 the writings that really moved me to get into this. And then I'll look at the problem statement of my work, the objectives that guided this particular study. And then I, from the literature and the other, from the, and the, and the frameworks that I used, the theoretical frameworks and the models that I used, I developed an initial framework which was subjected to um, questioning by the respondents. Then later on, I'll develop another. I, I developed now one that includes uh, recommendations from the respondents. Then I will just mention something about the methodology, the findings of the study, um, then the, the, the the output model that I came out uh, came up with, which is now the key um, uh, aspect of this particular study, which is the data literacy framework. Then the recommendations and limitations of the study and possibly the way forward. Kindly feel free to, um, to stop me if I'm very fast. Sometimes I get excited and I tend to speak very fast and sometimes uh, miss some of the statements. So the background, I, I, I hold a master's in, um, in library and information science from Kenyatta University here in Kenya, Nairobi. Then I did another master's in IT with uh, especially looking at uh, library solutions and softwares at the University of Pretoria. And when I came back, uh, to Kenya, to where I was working, I was um, by then I was working with Re mostly in the in the department of research within the library, uh, and I was made the head of uh, as, as as a research librarian, what we call in the country here. Um, I started interacting so much 
uh, with, the, with, with the researchers. And um, I had to go out of my own way to find ways of um, ensuring that researchers get what they want, because maybe we the library was not in a position to offer that. And I had to study some things by myself uh, so that I may train researchers in that. For example, uh, simple things like uh, reference management tools. Um, a number of researchers were not aware about them. Even personally, let me not cheat. I was not aware about it, but I had now to um, train myself uh, using YouTube videos and so forth. So I learned how to use Mendeley. I learned how to use Zotero. Um, those are some of the things that I had to train researchers in with that. These were not programs by the university or by the library that I was working, I was working with. Then I was made the head of the library. And as the head of the library, you are kind of at, at the management level of the organization, the university itself. And this puts you at the center of decision making within the institution. However, um, not all the decisions that you come up with are, are implemented because number one, there's the need, there's need, there's need for buy-in by the organization. Uh, number two, there are budget constraints. So um, those are some of the things. And even just the liking of people, uh, people liking the idea that you have or not. So I experienced this. And one of the things that I was, I, I, I was so passionate about was how do we make the library so conducive for researchers beyond just provide them, providing them with a space to sit and read and information resources. How do we come in when it comes to their research? So these are some of the things that really were intriguing to me and were pushing me to find out a solution to the challenges that researchers were coming across. Then uh, as I continue to practice, I, 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 I realized that this cannot just be something I might need to solve practically unless I put it in some kind of a study. That's when I applied for my PhD in, in library information science uh, at the University of Pretoria again. My intention at that particular time wasn't really on data I, because I was also teaching what we call information science at the university. And this was a course that was being taught to undergraduates. Um, I mean, information literacy, sorry, information literacy. Um, and therefore, the whole idea of knowing that users are in a position to know how to look for information, how to evaluate information, how to use information, how to store information, led me to realize that, but what about data? Isn't there also an opportunity or an avenue whereby, or a study that we also can train researchers on how to manage their data, how to publish their data, how to look for data, the whole realm of data being data literate. So that's when I started reading around, uh, coming across some studies here and there. And this formed my literature context. Um, so I started reading first of all, even before I joined the PhD, and I came across some of the most fascinating um, studies that now intrigued me to realize that there is something that needs to be done. So one of them was this just article that democratizing data, why data literacy will be the most important new skill of the 21st century. And now this one put me really at the center of everything. Another study was we are in a data literacy crisis. Could librarians be the superheroes that we need? So from the first study that I've just mentioned, democratizing data literacy, it already points out there is a there is there is a problem, there is a gap. But now, how do we fill this gap? Other than the resources, do we have the personnel? And now this provides the the, the, the solution of librarians coming in as superheroes that we need to uh, impart data literacy. Then I also looked for this, I, now that's when I was digging up for books and thank God with the budget of buying books within my institution, I was in a position to purchase data information literacy 
this is a book that has some uh, that has really a good chronology on on, on data literacy, the practices, uh, um, uh, how who is supposed to be taught data literacy, faculty and postgraduate students. But now, uh, this unfortunately there was no mention of the African context. Uh, there is this, the studies were more or less based in 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 North America um, and, and 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 other European countries. Then I realized that okay, within that this particular in the context of these studies, how now do we standardize our data literacy in Africa or in Kenya? In for the for the for, in, for instance, that's when I dug out something that looked like a a model, a concept, a framework, and came across this study building a conceptual framework for data literacy. So combining the different studies, I've just mentioned these as a, as a few studies that I came across, or I mean, I, 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 I read because there are so many other that I came through, but these ones really were at the center and at the core of my, of my interest in coming up with a data literacy framework or data studying about data literacy and particularly in the context uh, of universities. So in the development of my study, I had to come across, uh, uh, to come up with a problem statement that was now to guide my study. What they was telling the reader that this is the gap that existed. And this is why this particular researcher came up with this. So number one, I realized that there, there was an increasing importance of data. Um, there's a statement that says that data is now becoming the new oil or data is now becoming the new gold, depending uh, on, on, on which, which mineral you look at as the most expensive or the most uh, important mineral. So uh, it's, it's an increasing importance of data literacy in, uh, skills in the 21st century. People are looking for data. People are making use of data. Uh, the likes of Google, the likes of Wikipedia, the like, it, 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 it mentioned any in, in any company today um, that is in, in, in the tech company, the more they command data, the more powerful they are or advantageous they are than the other. So there is a whole realm of data that people are now aware of or governments or companies or institutions are aware of. So then in that particular context, uh, with the context of the of, 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 of uh, institutions, researchers, researchers are critic, playing a critical role, collecting data, analyzing data, disseminating data for the purpose of uh, of societal advancement. However, there is lack of standardization when it comes to training researchers on data. Uh, if you read through my entire thesis and the publication that will be coming out um, in the next one month, which is coming out of this, uh, you will realize that the, the African context seem to be so much disadvantaged because um, an institution will touch on data here or touch on something here or just show researchers on how to store their data on, on, on uh, to store their data on on on, on flash disk, and somebody will still tell you that oh we 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 are data um, literate or we 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 practice data management. You know those are the, some of the things that are coming in, and only these 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 are coming out from countries such as South Africa, which have made have made some little bit headway um, beyond other African countries. Then the debate is who is to carry out this the, the data literacy? Who is who is mandated or who is well trained to carry out data? So the debate is now on libraries and librarians. What role can they play in data curation and data literacy services? Um, and the Association of uh, College and Research Librarians in the in, in America is 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 also looking. It has also men, had a mention in one of the studies. Then there is oh, a, 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 an, an environment of or the gap of policy. You cannot just uh, do or teach or train researchers on data literacy without having a framework of, 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 uh, of policies and practices which are now supposed to guide this data. We live in a world at the moment whereby uh, unless 
also policies are in place. Uh, the whole thing about data cannot really you know, prosper very well. So do we have data literacy programs or do we have program, uh, I mean, policies that govern data literacy? That is something that within the studies that, that I did, there was a thought that there's a miss around that. And then some academic institutions uh, lack complete data governance policies or unfortunately have just rigid adaptability. Was, uh, libraries are trying to come up with something, what I've just indicated to you, what was happening in my institution trying to come up with something but rigidity within the governance of the institution is not really letting this penetrate or percolate through and the whole thing to take place so there is an absence of standardized frameworks which hampers uh, uh, universities libraries in addressing the demand that is existing and then there is misalignment in policy human resource uh, the librarians trained or are people in the universities trained to teach this? Then the whole idea of infrastructure, you cannot uh, train researchers on data literacy without having the right infrastructure in place. And then um, all these are leading to, we need, we need an intervention. It's calling for intervention that needs to be there. And so this really laid down the, the problem for the statement for my, for my study. And I felt now there is a gap somewhere that needs the answer. So I came up with uh, four uh, objectives. Number one was first of all, to critically have a look at the realm of the literature that is existing on data literacy. And may, the main thing was for me, first of all, to develop kind of a comprehensive, what I now in my study I'll call an initial framework, a comprehensive framework that encompasses essential services and components that will facilitate the successful implementation of data literacy initiative uh, for selected uh, universities in Kenya. So this, with this objective, uh, after reading, I was to read a number of articles, uh, books, um then went through uh, on, on data literacy then looked at some of the um theory theories or theory, theory theories that and models that will uh, influence uh data literacy and then i came up with an initial framework now it's this initial framework that i subjected to questioning uh, uh among the respondents then there's the assess, I wanted also to assess the data literacy needs of faculty and postgraduate students in selected private, private uh, universities. I'll give an information later on why uh, faculty and postgraduate students and which kind of faculty and with which kind of postgraduate students. Then I also wanted to assess the organizational infrastructure um, of the selected universities in order to determine the feasibility of offering data literacy services. Uh, what do they have uh, for them to offer this service? And then lastly, to assess the technical infrastructure readiness in the selected private university libraries in Kenya to facilitate the implementation of data literacy. So after reading around, after going through some of the uh, theories and some of the models, that had been developed by different uh, libraries or countries or whatever, I came up with my own initial framework, which now was to inform the respondent that this is the replica of what we will want to develop. Uh, will you mind having a look at it and telling us what, and uh, answering the following questions? So there were several questions that were, um, uh, linked to this uh, particular initial framework. So first of all, the framework was um, was influenced or uh, by some of the theo some theories. One of them was the uh, the radical change theory, uh, but there were only aspects in this radical change theory whereby I was looking at the digital age principles of uh, interactivity, connectivity, and access. Now, the radical change theory in the context of my study was trying to tell the, the reader, look here, there has been a development in either ICT or in studies or in different fields of study. 
But now, with the evolution of too much data that's now available, which has brought radical changes to research in itself, there is a demand that researchers need some level of training. So these are some, there are some aspects within this particular theory uh, by Coral, which influence the study by in, in indicating that the context in which that we are living in is not the same that was existing, let's say five years ago, 10 years ago for a researcher. Today's researcher must be in command of their, the, 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 of their data and their data is not just meant for themselves, but it's meant to be published. It's meant to be reused by other researchers. So I had the con in, in this particular context. That's when I had the independent variables of the researchers themselves, and then the research context, and even the research discipline. Which discipline are, are we looking at? And then I had which this was forming the main core process. But I'll come to it later on. Then I had the stakeholder theory that in the context of trying to look at um, data literacy, we have a context that is now challenging us, that we must train our researchers. We must, our researchers must be data literacy. Who should be involved? Who should take up the mantle? Who should be, um, who, who, who should be the key people that should run uh, this? So I looked at the different attributes that now will determine who will be the 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 the, the, theory, the the stakeholders within the institution of higher learning. I looked at the power, the legitimacy, and the agency. So, um, uh, in, in in this context, I was looking at um, things, uh, people like the the the, the uh, departments such as the library, the ICT department within a university, the research office within the university. These are within the, the these are the internal one the, within external. We'll mention later on. We'll see users were able uh, or uh, respondents were able to mention uh, research organizations within the countries. For example, in Kenya, we have one called Nakosti, which is in charge of research, and then the intellectual capital. This is where now the library was being considered to have the intellectual capacity to run data literacy. This is because um, the library had more majority of the, the, the respondents were mentioning uh, the library has been successful in rolling out information literacy to all library users. In the context of these, uh, university librarians are therefore or could be empowered for them to be able to offer this kind of this kind of training, that was number one. Number two, there was a feeling in the study that, uh, other than just the whole the, in, in, data literacy, does not fit within any curriculum or of any course. It looks independent, but it has affiliation to different units. It has affiliation to different disciplines. So the library stands out as an independent department within an institution that could be able to influence those other disciplines, those other units. So that, and that's the reason why it should be housed within the context of the library. So these are well, the moderating variables that my study also was having a look at. Uh, universities now libraries were being seen as catalysts. For example, data literacy policy can be developed within the library. The training and governance of it could be done within the library. The library staff have the capacity. And then there's the inf ICT infrastructure within the library that could help within that. For example, we were looking at libraries having uh, installed or managing repositories. A number of your libraries at the moment, when from the literature that I was reading, are managing data repositories within institutions of higher learning. So this also was uh, an added advantage or an added reason for them to be pointed out. Uh, research funders uh, or the obligations or the, the, the demands whereby there was a prerequisite for funding and therefore they were kind of being looked at stakeholders within the whole 
uh, process of data literacy. They were able to drive behaviors of researchers on how to conduct the research and also publishers who are also being seen as motivators, encouraging other uh, authors to cite other, um, uh, other, uh, other data that had been uh, um, archived somewhere else. Then there was a model that had been developed by Bielefeld University in Germany. This really was now coming closer home to something closer uh, to what I was now trying to imagine in my mind, developing data literacy. I had on one-on-one -on -one, uh, discussion with this, uh, the two gentlemen who developed this model. And, and it really was influencing, there was a very big influence in terms of developing kind of a curriculum uh, that now will carry out or that, that that will have the specific areas that researchers need to be trained on when it comes to uh, data literacy. So this was influencing, influencing that and was kind of influencing the mediating variables of my study, which were the data literacy competency development that were looking at the technical competencies, the data analysis competencies and data presentation, um, that's visualization competencies of 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 data there were also some complementing complementary mediating variables there are three type different literacies that i was looking at i when i was when i was doing my reading the influence of information literacy or if one had gone through information literacy or had studied information literacy or had been trained in information literacy, there was a way information literacy was having influence on data literacy. So if a researcher will come into the library and once or they want to be trained in data literacy, an idea of what information literacy or if they have gone through information literacy will be very advantageous rather than a, a researcher who will come and has completely no idea of what information literacy. So such skills, do they have such skills? Uh, do they know how to save information and so forth? So those were some of the things. Digital literacy, how do they use their digital gadgets? Are they uh, computer literate? Are they um, ICT savvy and so forth? Those again were some of the literacies that were complementing data in data literacy, as well as statistical literacy, as we lo we look at uh, as we come later on. So the main focus here was to is or was or is to come up with a researcher um, who is well uh, groomed in data governance and excellence ethical collection of, of, of data and its manipulation, uh, data literature researchers and faculty members or, or project graduate students, improved research within institutions or even researchers themselves, as well as developing uh, discoverability of whatever they work on, improved infrastructure within the institution, uh, data reusability and competent data librarians because in as much as librarians are the ones to take the um, researchers through the whole of this program, there is a way they are learning because there's no program in the universities, in universities in Kenya under information science or library science that is training librarians on data, lit on data literacy. So they are completely have no idea. So in the process of training, they will also be learning in the process of trying to read for themselves, they will be empowered to uh, train the researchers. So I will not delve so much into the methodology, uh, the research paradigm, which I use a pragmatic paradigm, and I will choose it for the practical advantages of it, um, knowing what, info, what data literacy will definitely involve. This will definitely be a very practical program within institutions. Uh, I used a mixed methods approach, um, and then the design was, I used a convergence design um, for the purpose of unifying understanding within the study itself. I, I had a study population, uh, the, I had only 
private chartered universities in Nairobi within the Nairobi metropolitan area. Uh, my participants were PhD students, and that's those who are the postgraduate students that I was mentioning the other time. These were only I dealt only with PhD students because of the high number of of uh, master students. I could not manage to deal with that. I dealt with faculty members. Um, I only dealt uh, with only permanent or full-time uh, faculty members within institutions because they were able to give me information that is relevant to that particular institution rather than part-time faculty members who are, move, who are moving from one institution to the, to the other. And then full-time um, uh, faculty members have, have a niche in research for the university. So they, are, they, they have a requirement within their job description that details that they need to get involved in research that also that supports the in the institution. Then I had university librarians, and among the university librarians, I picked out the head university librarians, and also what we call uh, research librarians or reference librarians who are working closely with the researchers in this institution. I did a header sampling, a purposive sampling, a full total population sampling, and uh, I determined using survey survey monkey uh, on how to select the numbers of the, the students. I mean, the number of uh, respondents that were in the study. The data collection I did a quantitative uh, where I did a questionnaire of a factual information, and this one went to um, uh, faculty members and the postgraduate student. And then I had semi-structured interviews uh, with the university librarians and also the reference and research librarians. So I had those uh, in, in, in uh, where I was carrying the interviews. I had five uh, universities, uh, private universities within the Nairobi Metropolitan. The mixed methods uh, used a mixed method convergence design for synthesis and quantitative and qualitative data. I uh, use different softwares uh, in uh, uh, data analysis and content analysis uh, where I drew out themes from the qualitative uh, and, uh, data that I had. Findings. These are the findings that I had. Allow me to start, uh, and, and the findings here are based on the objectives. I allow me to start with finding number two, because finding number one is now making up the entire, the, 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 the the, the key subject of the study, which was the developing of a framework. So um, under the objective two, which was data and finding the data literacy needs of the faculty members and postgraduate student or the researchers, they are definitely I encountered or identified a very big gap between the, what the library was offering as services um, and what was perceived to be data literacy needs of researchers. There was a complete uh, uh, divergence uh, from this. I, mean, I noted a low adoption of data management plans among researchers, which is the first thing a researcher should get, uh, should have an encounter with when they are doing their research, the development of DMPs. The majority of them had no idea what this is. And with and the, the, this was trying to inform me this why some of the researchers in the country here are failing to have access to some of the funding because of just developing a, a data management plan. Uh, we also I also identified lack of education training on uh, simple things such as on metadata, data storage options. Uh, most of the users were still um, archiving their data on desktops and they had no idea of some of the cloud mechanisms for storage of data and if they had it was very scanty or they did not use it um the competency in research data management was complete a big gap among researchers objective number three findings that i didn't well, i found out were well, one i identified lack of relevant organizational infrastructure um uh, lack of key data literacy related policies. Some of the policies that were available in the institution had nothing to do talking about data or training of researchers on data 
or even ICT policies that in one of the universities I found they had no ICT policy. Um, competent human resource librarians who are knowledgeable about uh, data literacy. Uh, the few that I came across had some scanty little knowledge about data literacy here and there, just like myself when I was training librarian researchers on, on, on a reference management tool. And that's the much they could do, or maybe data analysis uh, for those who are able to use SPSS and NVivo. I also identified gaps hindering the viability of delivering data literacy services. Um, some institutions had no mechanism of plans or even just uh, an idea on what they should do for their researchers within the institutions or within the library. And that was uh, a big gap that I identified as a finding. Clinical infrastructure readiness assessment. Um, this was uh, to, to, to look at the ICT technical uh, infrastructure that was available. The findings on the state of technical infrastructure readiness in selected primary universities was really wanting. Um, some institutions uh, have no mechanism for even data storage uh, adequate number of, of ICT tools or uh, computers within the institution that even just researchers could use, even just simple uh, software such as SPSS, some institutions were not did not have that for, for, for analysis of data, or if they had SPSS, then they had nothing on uh, for qualitative analysis within the institution. I identified existing resources and deficiency in necessary technical infrastructure. Uh, also some gaps that were highlighted in infrastructure appropriateness for implementing data literacy was really, really lacking. Then I go back to the objective one, some of the findings that I came up with, I came, I, I identified. Um, after going through the literature, and now after, and then subject, then coming up with an, an initial uh, framework, which now this framework that I came up with as an initial framework was included in the questionnaire that was sent to users. And also was it was sent to the uh, university librarians and research librarians uh, two weeks before I went for the interviews. So that by the time I was going for the interviews, they were aware of what uh, I was to ask them about. So I asked questions about that particular framework. I asked the, the there were questions within the um, within the, the 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 questionnaire that was asking questions about uh, the framework. So within this, I managed to come up with the framework and I formulated a comprehensive data literacy framework. Uh, where I integrated both uh, components from the literature and the study findings. Now, even from the findings from uh, 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 objective one, or, I mean, objective two, three, and four. And then I accompanied this, the whole process is accompanied by a process model demonstrating the linear flow from literacy needs to process of outputs. Now, what we expect within the institution in case institutions decide to adopt this framework as a standard platform from which they can launch their own data literacy framework. Um, so I'll move to that particular framework. So this is my final framework that I managed to develop out of the uh, literature review and the findings. Number one, users or the respondents had talked about the, the stakeholders. And you can see now on my list of stakeholders, the, 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 there is now not only just the library and the ICT, there is now the research directory or the research office or the research uh, department within the institution. Uh, also respondents mentioned about faculty themselves, other than just also being trained, the faculty teach research within the institution. So in, if they are not involved, in rolling out a data literacy program within that particular institution, there's, there's, there could be something that we will be, the institutions will be missing. So um, the users who are able to mention faculty members need to be involved. So I included them within this framework as key stakeholders. Then NACOSTI, this is the National 
um, agency that deals with the research, um, uh, providing licenses for research and so forth. And therefore, it comes in as an external uh, stakeholder that needs to be involved while developing or while rolling out or while implementing a data literacy framework. It's also important to consider while rolling out, because this is a standardized uh, um, a framework, it's also important to take into be cognizant of the research context, um, because this might not be only be rolled out in institutions of higher learning. Um, we have research fund, uh, research organization within the country that might decide, oh, let's have this framework and see what it does for us or any other agency or organization. So the research context also needs to be um, uh, considered. The research discipline that different disciplines within, those who are in STEM, those who are in social sciences, they are definitely uh, doing research. Maybe there are some components that are similar. There are components that are divergent to the two groups. Um, the research program, uh, you might not want to roll out completely as the same level for those who are doing master's program and those who are doing a PhD program uh, because um, the level of, 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 of teaching, the level of uh, carrying out research, there's, there, there's some variance within that. And therefore, the, the background of, of, of research also must be uh, taken care, care of. I mentioned about the complementary literacies, um, which are informing uh, the data literacy or, or the, 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 the adoption of data literacy among um, researchers themselves. You can see the dotted arrows uh, indicating that this is not a must, uh, but also can be, and, and it can also come in at a different, different, um, different stages. So for example, this point here, uh, the short arrow on the left-hand side that is point pointing towards the background and coming towards the complementarity, this is an avenue whereby if the user or a researcher has not been trained in any of these three uh, literacies, it would be good to include the, the, the literacies within the background, because that will, should be the, 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 the focal that, that should be formed of the background itself. When you are looking at who should be trained in data literacy, um, at an at an advanced stage, or who should be trained in data literacy at a very very basic stage, because these three literacies have an information could inform whether your researcher within that particular institution will be in a position to grasp very fast whatever you'll be training them on data, or you'll be going back to start training somebody on how to hold a computer mouse because they have no idea of the digital lit of, of, of how to handle a computer, how to switch on a computer, or even just how to use some of the packages on a computer. So those are some of the simple things. The statistical literacy, uh, can this person do some of the basic analysis uh, within, uh, within, within research or not? So those are some of the things that need really to be considered in this context. The competencies that need to be developed in this context are look at the technical competencies, which now um, a majority of, 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 uh, of the respondents and as well as the what I came up with from the literature is to look at things, to, to look at data management planning. You remember the development of a data management plan, data organization and management itself, the whole procedure and the whole lineup the whole cycle of managing data. Data privacy and security, how are they taking care of their data? How are they using their data or how are they disseminating their data without infringing on some of the privacy and confidentiality that needs to go with it? Data sharing and collaboration um, with the data reuse, uh, uh, interoperability and so forth. These are some of the technical competencies that need, they need to be trained on or trained in. Number two is to look at data analysis competencies, data analysis themselves and basic statistics 
uh, that those are some of the things that need to be looked at. And that could even include the training the users or training researchers on how to use some of the softwares, uh, SPSS, uh, NVivo, or any other that might be available within the institution. And then data presentation and competence, data visualization. It's, it's, it's more appealing when you look at data and data speaks to you um, the, the, uh, as the way it's presented. Data presentation itself and data dissemination. How do they disseminate their own data? Uh, when I was talking about data dissemination, some people are thinking about just publication there and I was telling them, no, it's not about publication. Uh, publication could just be one of them, but your own data now, your raw data, uh, that you have <clears throat> that you you have archived collected do you know that can could be disseminated somewhere else and another researcher could uh, make use of it the output of all this number one is to have an improved research so in this context is looking uh, you we are expecting to have, have data literate researchers increased data management competencies among researchers, uh, improved research discoverability uh, for researchers' work, uh, utilization of data tools and technologies. Uh, uh, they will be able to be, uh, have adherence to fair data principles, improved research output and impact. I need to remove that, uh, something is uh, crossed in improved research output and impact and then also number two uh that will the first one will output touches on the researcher them uh, himself or herself uh now in, in, uh, number two the output number two will be looking at the institution itself uh relevant data management training curriculum definitely will have been developed within the institution policies and procedures should should will have been developed um research ethics and compliance support uh hardware equipment data analysis softwares will be uh, available made available within the institution high speed internet connectivity research data repositories as well as collaborations agreement and space between researchers either within the same institution or within with this, the um, researchers within that particular institution and researchers are in other institutions, especially um, from the West. And then output number three, the competence of data librarians. This is also a learning process that we also expect librarians will gain some knowledge about it. So advice on data management principles, uh, facilitates data curation, enabling and uh, en enabled data discovery, provides training in technical skills, this will have will be the output that we expect out of this standardized um, uh, <clears throat> this standardized framework that could be adopted by institutions if they decide uh, at least to uh, as a guide to uh, them rolling out or implementing data literacy. What recommendations have I come up? Am I coming up within this particular after coming up with this uh, data framework or this output model? Uh, if one, there's need to improve data related services, offering training on metadata creation and data management, and collaborating with other stakeholders. Um, by implementing this, I'm very uh, optimistic that uh, some of this will come out. Number two. Um, Universities should prioritize policy developments, uh, especially those that are related to data, invest in technical infrastructure, have even some of the most basic. I know budgets are not um, favoring, but at least universities should try themselves to ensure that to ensure that um, they have all this in, 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 in place and provide training for librarians. We the, the 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 framework itself it's even trying to um, enlighten uh, library science schools uh, so that they may try to come up with programs that will train librarians and in 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 in, in terms of how to uh, how to be data literate or how to be to train researchers in data literacy. 
Uh, number three, uh, collaboration among stakeholders will be essential to strengthen data literacy and align with global trends towards open science. I think this one speaks uh, to itself and very clearly, and I'm very sure if this one is picked up, uh, this will definitely happen. Some of the limitations that I had while carrying out this study, number one, it was about funding. Um, when you look at my uh, thesis, you'll realize I had so many respondents that I had to deal with, so much data that I had to deal with, and therefore uh, funding was a problem. And this is one of the things that has led to the delay of my graduation, because I had to take spend so much time on, 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 the, on the thesis itself. And therefore, that could not uh, happen as fast as possible because of the funding. Number two, it was time. I really lacked time. And therefore, uh, it was not easy for me to conclude this as fast as possible as I really wanted. And my expectation was to graduate last year, but I had no time. Number three, um, one of the universities, I expected to, to, to look at six universities. Unfortunately, one of the universities at the last moment, even after having all the necessary supporting documents, just pulled out and it declined to grant me permission to collect data at the end. And this really disoriented me and it's one of the things that really uh, had a delay on my work. What's the way forward? Of course, I'm looking forward to graduating in the month of May. After this, um, I and the uh, this is, I'm so happy and so excited about it. And uh, number two, uh, the, 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 the research itself uh, provides an opportunity for almost six to seven publications that will come out of it, um, which I'll be doing with my supervisors. Uh, one or two of them will be coming out in the month of May, uh, I mean, no, in the month of April, and I wish to do more out of it. The data itself is still very much available. It's going to be archived at the, at the data repository at the University of Pretoria. And if, uh, if it happens that some of you will want to have access to it once it has been archived and now it's ready to go live, I will definitely provide that uh, possibility for those who will want. And number, number four, um, there, there is an initiative already now in the country on, 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 on data management, trying to develop a national data repository. Uh, and AFOL and the Kenya Libraries and Information Services Consortia, CLISC, which I also serve as a secretary within, is looking for funding. Uh, and we hope AFOL will be providing this uh, for the development of a national data repository. And already I have been approached by some people uh, to see if there are some aspects within the thesis um, that will help train researchers, particularly data sharing, data archiving. So those are some of the things that I'm looking forward as a way forward towards this study. And I hope um, for the best. Thank you very much for listening to me for all those minutes.